think we're live. I think we're live. Are we live? We might awesome. Be live. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are live. It's Maria and Evan from the CODA team again. Some of you might have attended our most recent live stream last week. We had so much fun that we thought, why not do it again? So, so, much fun. <laughs> so maybe too much fun, so you could argue. <laughs> So today's topic is going to be about planning a trip. And this actually comes from something that Evan did recently, planning mm -hmm. a trip with his group of friends going up to Sun Valley. So today we're going to figure out how do we actually plan a trip with a group of people using Coda as our platform for it. So like last time, let's just brainstorm some of the things that we need this doc to do. Totes my goats. And it was honestly like, this is one of the scenarios that's always come up for me mm -hmm. and my friends, which is yeah. like, how do we get everybody coordinated around a trip, get right. itineraries, figure out what we're doing all the time. Mm -hmm. There's usually like one person who like sits down and does it. Yep. And so this time it was me and I like <laughs> went and I decided to open up Coda and figure it out. Uh, I also team. definitely wanted to do a ski trip mm -hmm. because it is like end of ski season, but in some parts of the country, still awesome snow, yeah. awesome conditions. And Sun Valley was just a completely gorgeous, mm -hmm. beautiful place to start. So, uh, yeah, let's plan a ski trip mm -hmm. in South Dakota. Yeah. Um, so first things first, I opened up a fresh, crisp code Ooh, doc here. That nice new doc mm, smell. Delicious. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start with my favorite part, as always, which is what icon should we use? <laughs> I think this one looks pretty fun. Ski simulator. Ooh. What does is that, that even mean? Is that from that, like, really old... Like PC game that you get like installed on your computer, like in, in the <laughs> like old days. Like flight simulator. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Except this one looks like you're like rocking on mm -hmm. something side to side. That's cool. Planning ski trip. Love it. Um, and let us figure out what we're gonna do. Welcome to the dock. Um, so to start, I'm going to let's let's think of some things we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. I think the first one would be just who's going in general. Yeah, who's going and um, when are they arriving? List of people. Mm -hmm. Arrivals. Um, we're probably going to want to do something around like information about the place we're yep. going. Yeah. I know for one that I didn't really know anything about mm -hmm. Sun Valley going to. Very well, and you don't want history. to be the one person who everyone's texting or emailing, yeah. being like, "Hey, where's the thing again? Like, how do I get there?" Yeah. Yeah. What's the? Uh, what are the dates? Mm -hmm. And maybe like a countdown clock to like Ooh. figure Add out a little flavor. Yeah. <laughs> and get people excited that yeah, we're going to be there soon. for sure. Um, and then... An itinerary. So what are all the things yeah. that once we get there that we're actually going to do? So full list of things with dates and times. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually down the line, we can use that to figure out how to like notify people mm, yeah. at moments so they know where they need to be. Mm -hmm. This is actually super helpful for other things where it's like very specific. People need to get yeah. to a certain like wedding planning as an example. Yeah. You have to be at a place. Get your dress on. Get to the do photos. <laughs> We can definitely integrate some of our packs. We can figure out how to get calendar invites, mm -hmm. uh, invites going. We can get daily alerts yep. uh, via email so mm -hmm. people can wake up in the morning with a new <sighs> list of the things to do. Mm -hmm. Weather, I think probably a good idea. Weather. Here. Oh yeah, we can do like a little weather forecast mm -hmm. yep. specific to our trip. Um, what else? We could do expense splitting. Yeah, that I think is at least in my experience, the bane of any group trip. It's like everyone's paying for certain things and then you got to get paid back, but then how do you do it? And without it just being a big old mess. How to sure. split up the money with mm -hmm. wings emoji. Yep. Perfect. And then we could do something fun at the end, maybe if we have time, which is like, Obviously, when you go on vacation, you have to let your coworkers know where you're going. Yeah. Uh, obviously, like you can just put up an out of office message. But what if you could do something a little bit dynamic? Mm -hmm. or every day, a Slack message sent Ooh. to your team that says, you "Sorry, I can't be here. I'm <laughs> skiing on this run, this mountain, at this time." Uh, Slack. The sassy pack. Out of office mm -hmm. sassy pack. <laughs> Perfect. All right, cool. So I think we've got a pretty good laundry list of things we want yep. to do. So let's just start with the overview section yep, of the trip sense. and what we're going to go do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start this right now. Um, and this is going to be the Sun Valley session. I'm going to put in maybe like a little valley. Mm. Let's see if that comes up with something cool. Nope, Pied Piper logo. That doesn't make sense <laughs> for that. Uh, mountains. Mountains. There's, I know there's, there's at least definitely going to be some snow capped mountain mountains. Mountain. Cool. Uh, and then we're going to do some Sun Valley, Sun Valley trip. And I'm going to do H1. And so the first thing I'm going to do is add the people who are coming. Mm -hmm. um, probably going to align this left. And I'm going to say, 
Maybe let's add it as a table because what we can do yeah. is from the previous one we know you can actually get a bunch of information from mm -hmm. the people column format which can tell you right. the, the avatar so we can see beautiful faces. Love that. And then we also can pull an email address mm -hmm. which we'll use later for some of the other yeah. packs we have in well, here. Well and there might even be other things that we want to have associated with each of the attendees. You know like what their skills are or what kind of car they drive so that we can mm -hmm. figure out carpooling or things like that. So having a people table usually makes a ton of sense with something like this, since people are so important to the actual process. Totally. So I'm just going to format this column on this people table I just created uh, with people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to notify people when they're added. They don't have to be. Um, and you'll see that by default, it only shows myself in here. So I've got me. That's great. Oh, you're by yourself. It's so lonely in here. So I'm going to share this doc with you guys, yeah. actually. Uh, Justin is also in the room with us, Hi, uh, as always. Um, so I'm going to get Justin in, I'm going to get Maria in here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, we're going to jam on this together. Let's plan a ski trip. Okay. Um, so you guys are going to get an email pretty soon here. All right, I'm checking right now. And once I add you guys to the doc, now I have the ability to actually see you in the person list. So I've got Justin and I've got Maria in here. And if I want to take this and make it a little bit uh, better formatted where I can then pull back the picture and email, all I have to do is pull those values from this person column. This actually, you can see if I hover, this, this actual value contains multiple values underneath it. This is what we call the reference in a lot of the product. And so what I can do here is equals on the pick column and just say take the person. Uh, which is that first column there. And I'm going to do dot, which is mm -hmm. the way that I can kind of build into the formula language. And I'm going to pull back my pahoto. Mm -hmm. And now I've got a quick little image here of me. I'm going to format this as an image. And now I can style it. I'm going to make it a circle. Looks pretty cool. And yeah, so any new people we add to here, their photo will automatically show up. And I'll do the same thing with email. So I'm going to take person, I'm going to do dot email. And now I have the email address of the folks that I added so that I can use it in the future. I'm going to add one more thing for fun, which is how caffeinated Ooh. are you? Because, you know, first thing in the morning is pretty rough for me. Mm -hmm. I'm, not like, I'm not like super on in the morning. So I'm going to put on this caffeinated level. Mine is pretty low right now. I'm one cold brew in. Uh, I'm going to give myself a four since I'm drinking coffee right now. Justin, I think, is on a... I think he's getting very little shaky, lots of coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely on the five level. Uh, cool, so we've got who's coming on the trip. Uh, next thing is we wanna know where we're going. So the first thing I'm going to say is we're going to, and I'm gonna use something called a named formula here. So many of you have seen in Coda uh, where you can type equals in the canvas and you can do fun things mm -hmm. like two plus two and you get the answer four, that's good. Checking to make sure we're still in reality. <laughs> Math is uh, still stable. Math still works. Um, but you can also use this to actually uh, create a variable you can use elsewhere in the mm -hmm. document, which is super helpful. So, for yeah. example, I know that throughout this document, reference Sun Valley, Idaho. That's mm -hmm. the place we're going. Uh, so I'm going to type equals, and I'm actually just going to put in quotation since this is a string, Sun Valley, Idaho. And that's actually going to be a formula in the canvas, and what I can do is name it and I can name it something that is going to be useful in other places. Right. So for the weather, I'm going to pull back what the weather is for this location. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to call this location. Mm -hmm. And so now I've got Sun Valley, Idaho here. If I say equals and I type in location anywhere in the canvas, now I'm going to return mm -hmm. Sun Valley, Idaho. So I can use this yeah. in a bunch of different places really quickly. This is super helpful if you have like a specific uh, formula that you've built to calculate some part of your business or something very particular to you, and you want to be able to reuse it in other locations. It's a great way to take something that you've spent a lot of time building out and then be able to just plug it in wherever you need it. So a really good um, hack in that way. Yeah. yeah. So for example, let's start with the weather. Mm -hmm. We want to just quickly see and give yes, people indeed. an idea of what it's looking like out there. So I'm going to say where the weather, if I could spell, Why start see now? earlier comment about caffeination, <laughs> where the weather is, and then I'm going to have to find the weather, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to copy paste it from outside of no. weather.com. I'm just going to use the weather pack. So I'm going to go ahead, open this up, and I'm going to hit add new pack, and I'm going to install the weather pack brought to you by AccuWeather. <laughs> Da, da, da. Uh, we were not paid to say that. Um, <laughs> and with this pack, you can see here that I can pull back a couple things. I can get the current weather, and I can also get the daily forecast, which mm -hmm. we'll use later as we build yeah. out our itinerary. So I'm going to install this. You'll see that that just installs instantly. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to authenticate with anything because I don't have a personal yeah, AccuWeather it's account. It's just a general piece. Yep, and mm -hmm. so now that I have that, I can type equals, and I will now see that weather is an optional formula for me mm -hmm. in the formula language. 
And so if I put in weather and I want the current weather for a location, you'll see that there's two parameters. One is current uh, location, so I have to pass in the location. And then is metric, which is lets me choose if it's Fahrenheit or Celsius. Celsius. So those of you who are dialing in today from Europe, not to worry. Yep. And mm -hmm. so remember how I made that name formula earlier for the location. I can actually use that here so I don't have to worry about typing in Sun Valley, yeah. Idaho every time. I can just type in the word location and you'll see that that'll pull it back. And this defaults is metric is an optional field that defaults for you. And I'm gonna hit enter here, and this pulls back what the current weather is. So it's currently cloudy in Southern Valley, which is, I think, fine. That usually means snow might be on the way, which mm -hmm. is probably good yeah. news. Um, and you can see here that I get back all this really rich information from AccuWeather. I can get the location information, temperature, feels like, humidity, wind mm -hmm. speed, all really important things for somebody who's yeah. planning a trip, especially to the mountains. For sure. Um, so great, I have now have a quick named formula I can use elsewhere, and I've got my weather. Mm -hmm. um, next thing I want to do is pull in just a little bit of information about Sun Valley. Mm -hmm. So one thing I might do is I want to embed just a map of the location. Yeah, so I actually I've never been before, so it might yeah. be helpful for people who've never gone to get an idea of what to expect. And you may not know that there's multiple mountains in uh, Sun I Valley. I didn't know yeah. there were multiple mountains There's in Dollar Sun Mountain, Valley. which is a little bit for the easier skiers, and then there's the Bald Mountain, which is kind of the main Main cool. attraction, which is oh, pretty cool. Isn't that in Fantasia? Night on Bald Mountain. I think it is actually with that like crazy <laughs> soundtrack. Scary. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that just took me back to a dark place. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm currently there. Um, <laughs> and so we're going to take just the link to this map, mm -hmm. and we'll use uh, Coda's embed feature. So we have the ability to embed a bunch of different rich content from videos, which we did last time, yeah. and the movie trailers, uh, to things like maps. So if I click this in and I just type a link to the map and I say create, now I've got a little embedded map of Sun Valley that shows up here. And I can drag this around, I can zoom in, I can do all the things that I can do in Google Maps, so mm -hmm. that's super cool. Um, what I also may want to do is use the Wikipedia pack to pull yeah. back some information about mm -hmm. Sun Valley. I like to do my research. Um, so I can go in and I'm going to add another pack here. I'm going to go back, add new pack, and I'm going to type in Wikipedia. And this is just going to let me do some research on different locations that might mm -hmm. come up. I'm going to do a little table here as well because there's a few different places. Yeah. There's Bald Mountain itself, which is super interesting. Mm -hmm. There's Sun Valley generally, and there's also uh, Ketchum, which is the little town mm -hmm. that's there that has its own its own yeah. awesome history. And anytime you notice that you're going to need to have the same kind of relationship between data, so uh, a place we want to go and information about it, having a table helps you structure it, keep it really organized, and also build in some uniformity and standardization. So in general, opting for tables anytime you want a little more structure is going to make you have a much cleaner code doc. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to type in a few places here, Ketchum, Idaho. And then if you remember, all I have to do is format this column as the Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and it will pull back all the information that I need uh, from Wikipedia automatically. So now you can see that this gives me a loaded set of information. So if I hover this, it'll show me, oh my god, this sweet picture of Bald Mountain. Whoa. Doesn't that look beautiful? That does look beautiful. Uh, I really want to be there. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, I'm going to have an image column here. I'm going to pull that back, and I'm going to do the uh -huh. description as well. Um, and then I can just take this and do equals place dot, and then I'm going to pull back the image. So now I've mm -hmm. got a picture. <laughs> it's repeat Sun oh, Valley. Looks it's like known you had the for same, its bald mountain. So that same makes Wikipedia sense. entry, uh, not entry, but author. And then place dot, uh, let's do body. And we're mm -hmm. going to get a bunch of information that's helpful for folks who want to just learn a little bit more about nice. the place. Um, and like last time, what I can do is format this in a different way. So I'm going to change this to this detail view. Oh yeah, this is perfect. And so then I can actually format this so it looks pretty cool mm -hmm. instead of looking just like a, a table. So I'm going to change this here. I'm going to drag this image to the top. I'm going to put the description right here. Nice. And then in a few quick clicks, I now have this little navigational thing which yeah. has the picture at the top. It's got a well-formatted mm -hmm. description. Uh, and I can go through and take a look yeah. at information about it. It almost starts to feel kind of like a, like a travel book, something you would you know buy yeah. that you can page through, but it's right there. And then also, if you were to open this on your phone, you'd be able to go through here as well and be able to page through. So it's, it kind of lets people have that digital guide, but it's curated by you instead of something that you have to sort through someone else's ideas about what they think is important. Totally. Like just for your trip. And it's a perfect call out for our favorite hack, which is to open an incognito window. Yes and throw in the developer tools. Uh, so going to more tools and developer tools. 
uh, and you can actually then from there uh, you'll see this little pop-up and you can choose to view this uh, browser window as a specific device. Mm -hmm. So in this case we have a phone, we refresh the page and you can see that all this information we have here is automatically being formatted by Coda in a way that fits the phone yeah. perfectly. Perfect. So I can see now I've got my coffee cups. I'm going to I'm going to put myself up on the coffee cup level. Hey, all right. I'm feeling a little better now. <laughs> it started a little it's, rough. It's it's, it's, like it's the energy waving the off osmosis. my coffee cup. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to need a sip of that, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got our embedded map, which we can do all the same stuff with. Mm -hmm. And we've got these little uh, areas here. And then when I click into this, it has the same format that I just Perfect. set up here. Mm -hmm. um, there's one last thing I'm going to do, which is a little bit of a thing that I like to do with some of the friends, which is to pre-look at Instagram feeds for the place we're going <laughs> okay. to, because you can see like all the different activities that yeah, are going we on. Yeah, want to go there for sure. Uh, so I'm going to put too. some space underneath this, and I'm going to add a table here of, uh, this is just going to be some Instagram pictures. So Insta love, <laughs> and I'm just going to link to some Instagram photos, Instagram. And I'm actually going to install the Instagram pack. So yeah. we have the ability to pull in, given the link to a specific Instagram mm -hmm. uh, post, you can then pull back the actual post details, the author's account, things like that. Mm -hmm. Again, another unauthenticated yeah. uh, piece here. And so I've already pre-searched Sun Valley and Instagram. This was a fun one for me. Uh -huh. I missed this when I was there. But there's a, you can ski into a pool, <laughs> which seems dangerous for so many reasons. I feel like you reasons. get cold, but I'm down, sure. Yeah, I mean, if there's a hot tub nearby, <laughs> yeah, I'm good right. to go. Yeah, all right, then it's fine. Um, and so I'm gonna paste this Instagram picture here. And actually, you, you see something cool that happened. So before I went and mm -hmm. I reformatted the column to be Wikipedia, so I actually had to take that action. Mm -hmm. Coda actually will recognize if you paste a, a link of a specific type once you've configured the pack. It recognized that this was Instagram. It did all that formatting for That's me. That's awesome. Yeah. So now I've got this link to the specific Instagram post we have here, mm -hmm. and I can pull back all the information about it. Um, for some reason, this might not be loading, but uh, you kind of get the picture. So I can mm -hmm. put in a bunch of my different Instagram pieces here. Uh, that's a pretty inspiring one. This is, this person's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna put this <laughs> in. Shredding. Shred the gnar. And then uh, that's, and then what else do I want? Maybe just one more picture, mm -hmm. just for good measure. That one with the sunset's kind of cool. Oh uh, yeah, sunset. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. For the hikers out there. Exactly. The people who aren't actually going on the mountain skiing. Mm -hmm. um, so I can pull this back and I can get the image as well by typing equals link to Instagram mm -hmm. dot and then pull back image. Um, so you'll notice there's a trend here of you get one source of information, be it something from a, a pack or from another uh, location, and then you're able to extrapolate it out. So if you start with, say, a link, you can always then add further information as your needs require. So it's a way to kind of build out from one uh, single source. Yep. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove a bunch of the cruft in the table. So as folks have been submitting for Makers Fest, We've mm -hmm. noticed so many different permutations of how tables can be yeah. viewed inside of Coda. One of them is just to hide all of the like all the stuff that yeah. sits around it, like the grid to. lines and the column headers, things mm -hmm. like that, where you just want to show the image and mm -hmm. the text. Uh, so if I go into this display setting, I can remove things like column headers and grid lines. And so now it just feels like it's embedded into the canvas. Uh, but you know in the background it's a mm -hmm. table that has all the power associated with that. Mm -hmm. So Super cool. Yeah, and you could still be dragging and dropping things around in the table, so it still functions with all of that structured data, but it's it's helpful for people who are used to being more of a consumer of whatever you put out there, right? Like Evan's friends are gonna be able to look at this and it's just gonna feel like a custom guide that he's made. They won't necessarily go, ah, oh, there's the tabular structure of the grid in the <laughs> database, blah, 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 blah. Yes, you know. exactly. <laughs> so now we've got our welcome section, so this should mm -hmm. be would this make you excited? I'm excited already. Okay, I'm like, cool. man, why, why wasn't I invited <laughs> the to this ski trip? <laughs> so I did see Captain Marvel after the oh. last uh, mm -hmm. thing we did. So I feel like I'm just going to book this trip after yeah. this one. And Sounds good. See you, mm -hmm. see you next weekend. Perfect. Um, great. So we've got our welcome section. So the next thing we're going to do is build out our itinerary, which is right. kind of the meat of this whole mm -hmm. this whole situation. Yeah, that's where we actually start getting the work done. Yeah. Where we start handling uh, the different competing people that we have. Cool. Um, and Maria, can you make this into a checklist for me as well? Oh, for Maybe sure. While I go do set. that, and then we can go and just check off all you the things it. as we get going. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I'm going to create a new section here. I'm going to call this itinerary. Hard word to spell for me. Um, 
And so this is actually something I've already built out. Uh, I have just kind of what I used to do with, with spreadsheets, which is just build out this little table that has, here's the place we're going, here's the timing, mm -hmm. start and end time, uh, as well as some details about it. Um, so I'm gonna go through and put that in here. Actually, I should probably use a calendar. Um, and then I am going to say itinerary section, I'm gonna put in a little, uh, here's a fun hack in the ca canvas. If you type the open colon, you can actually get uh, the emoji picker right side of the canvas, which is super Evan's important. Evan's most, most important feature. Uh, and what I'm going to pull in is this list. So you'll see inside of this spreadsheet, I have just a list of the different activities, start and end time, and then the address. Um, address is helpful, obviously, for folks to know where we're going. They can input into Google Maps. But for me, it's also going to be useful to figure out things like the weather and, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, stuff that's around that when we're, when we're inside the table structure. So I'm going to just take this, copy, and I'm going to paste this right into Coda. Boom. Oh, that looks nice. So Coda automatically formats all the stuff for me, as we'd expect. So I see that uh, we've got this one table that comes in. I'm going to call this uh, my travel deets. Um, and I am going to change uh, some of the column formats just to make it a little bit easier to see. Right. So you'll see that it formats these start and ends as date times. Uh, I'm going to adjust this so that the date format looks a little bit clearer so I get the actual day, I know which year yeah. it is, and I'm going to change the time format to just be on the hour. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Just cleans up a little mm -hmm. bit of the view for folks who are accessing this stuff. And those of you who are based um, not inside of the United States, you can also change your date format around to match how you like to have it. So instead of it being month, day, year, you could do day, month, year, or vice versa. So it's a way for you to always adjust. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a conditional format on this. So, so I intentionally made these dates so that we're already on the trip, just to show oh, what yes. it would feel like as mm -hmm. we're kind of going through it. I'm imagining I'm in Sun Valley. So right we now. are in Friday, ah. and technically we should be on a plane we right are. now. We are. Are we? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Leaving. Um, and I am going to go ahead and I'm going to add a conditional format to this that basically highlights whichever row we're currently sitting on. Perfect. Um, and we're going to use a formula called now. So mm -hmm. previously we used uh, a formula called uh, today. In our, the Basically the example is if I want to pull back today's date for use in any mm -hmm. kind of filters or things like that, all I have to do is type into the canvas equals today. And that will give me today's date. Mm -hmm. And so that'll change over each day. And so I'll return just the dynamic date. Now, as an example, also shows me today's date, but also the current time. So mm -hmm. I can use this as a countdown clock yep. as well to figure out how much time is mm -hmm. left uh, for a specific activity. And so what I want to do is actually uh, make a conditional format that's based on the now formula. And it's where uh, the start time is less than or equal to now, and the end time is greater than. Um, so mm -hmm. basically, will let me kind of pull everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new rule. I'm going to say where uh, start time, and I'm going to say now is greater than or equal to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say and, so that lets me put multiple Two criteria parameters. together. And I'm going to do now, if you remember back to your math days, you oh. get this little uh, brackety bracket. <laughs> and I'm going to say end. And so it's, uh, you saw here when I entered the formula, it says one of 18 rows matches that, mm -hmm. which shows me that it's picking it's the right thing. Line. Because yeah. if it was picking all rows or no rows, then mm -hmm. we would have a problem. And I'm going to go ahead and color this row blue. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to color it blue. Right Great. On. Perfect. We're heading to the airport. Right so now. we're heading to the airport. And in a few moments, we'll be at the airport. And we'll be ready to fly to Sun Valley. Excellent. And you're going to see this change from the highlight to be the first to the second row mm -hmm. here, which is super cool. Yeah. And this will also hold true on your mobile device. So if I were looking at the itinerary on my phone, I would also see that there. So if I'm like in the food court at the airport, I'm like, oh, I got to run to the flight so I can actually catch it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. could even send yourself a text message from this doc saying, well, hey, you're late for your flight. That, that might be a little bit overkill. I feel like you're at the airport for a purpose. You should like, remember to get on the plane. Um, and yeah, you can see here on the mobile view of this mm -hmm. that, it, that it shows perfectly there. Yep. Um, so cool, I've got that conditional format. The next thing I may want to do is look at the weather report sure. for that location for each of these start and end yeah. times. So I basically have a way of doing my own personalized forecast. Mm -hmm. Usually I find myself in the morning like checking really yeah. frantically to figure out what's going on. If there's mm -hmm. any difference between locations in San Francisco, it's like, 
literally every 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 block is a different yeah <laughs> yeah if i'm going to the mission i need to wear a uh, overcoat and if i'm going to be in dolores park mm -hmm. i'm going to be wearing a t-shirt um, but it'd be helpful for the people who are using the stock it's like another service you can offer them say oh if it's going to be rainy then when they get ready to head out from their room they can grab their coat and it's just all put together so that you all can just focus on having fun totally which is, which is the key. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the weather pack again. This mm -hmm. time, instead of a canvas, I'm going to add it as a column format. Right. Um, so when I do that, you can see here as I add it, it lets me put in current weather as a format option. Um, I can also use it as a column formula. So if I go and I add another column here and I say, this is the forecast, mm -hmm. um, I can type equals and I can do weather. And you'll see that this gives me again those two options, mm -hmm. current, which is what I had before, but what I really want is the daily forecast, which yep. adds on top of the location, it adds the date. So then it can actually pull mm -hmm. the forecast for I believe it's five days in advance. Sounds right, yeah. So mm -hmm. this is perfect, it's for this week, uh, weekend. So I'm gonna do daily forecast. And now I'm gonna pick location and date. And for me, the cool part about having this all in the row is that I can just quickly reference the address mm -hmm. to be the, yep, the, location, the location and the date just being a starter end date. And mm -hmm. that will pull for each row individually yep. versus me having to do a bunch of complex Have formulas. Or changing it every single time. Yeah, yep. so I'm gonna say weather daily forecast and I'm gonna pick uh, location is address mm -hmm. and I'm gonna pick the date as start date as mm -hmm. an example. That makes sense. And now when I press enter here, this is gonna go and load from the weather pack and it's just gonna shoot down and show me all of the different weathers, mm -hmm. all the weathers, all, all of, of the All of the weather? All of all weather belongs to What's it to gonna us. be like outside? Yeah. <laughs> and you can see, actually, this is over my shoulder a little bit, so oh, yeah. I'm gonna move a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, and I'm gonna put this in the front, so it's a little bit front and center. So I can see that for this particular location in time, we've got the forecast uh, partly sunny with showers, which is a little scary. Yeah. Honestly, on the mountain, it's probably gonna be fine. Yeah. Um, Maybe but then we're icy. really just prepping at that time. Yeah, then intermittent clouds all the way through. Yeah. And what I want to do too is I want to show a visual for my friends who are going to log in here just uh -huh. so that they can see visually what yeah. that means. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say uh, forecast image and I'm going to pull back from the forecast my image and that's going to give me a beautiful little image of the sun yeah. and the rain. That's good. And I can also pull back things like the temperature. So if I wanted to kind of get from this uh, the high or min or max, I can pull that back as mm -hmm. well. So I've got all this detail in here now and I've got my perfect little forecast. Yeah. Um, so that took me just a few minutes mm -hmm. and I've got this dynamic thing for, for my friends. And just like we did with the guide bit before with the Wikipedia pack pulling in those different articles and the images, we could format this to be in uh, in that detail view as well and having it be again having the little uh, date along the side so people can cruise on through and change how this looks depending on how we feel. But in this case it seems like a table probably makes the most sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so now that I've got this done, uh, the last thing I want to do is, as I'm setting the stage for mm -hmm. this trip, let's say I was doing this in advance, but I'm currently doing it now, um, I want to make sure that it gets on everybody's calendar. Right. Um, so they at least have it blocked, they know what they can expect, they can look at their own calendar and mm -hmm. see it, or they can look at the Coda doc and see it as well. Yeah. And so what I'm going to use is the Google Calendar Pack. Mm -hmm. So with that, I can actually create events from Coda and just using a button, yep. I can just put those events with whatever description mm -hmm. or detail I want to yeah. into my calendar view. And people could even, on their own, based on their own preferences, decide to add things ad hoc. You know, maybe I don't need to have all of the, every single thing about getting ski gear, getting groceries, etc. Maybe I just want to add like the big milestones. You could actually leave it up to other people too. So the calendar pack is neat because it lets you really connect those two really important sources of truth, like your time and then your stuff. Totally. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the calendar pack in. And this will look very similar to the other packs I've added mm -hmm. for Instagram, Weather, and Wikipedia, right. except this one will require that I authenticate. So yeah. because it's trying to connect with my calendar, it can do things like post items to my calendar. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to log in with this one. So it says sign in to install. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a helpful video narrated by someone next to me. And uh, I will be able to then install this mm -hmm. pack. Um, I already have logged in uh, with my email account, so that's already available yep. for me to use. So I'm going to click this. And and then I'm going to not share this with anybody. This is an option I have when I'm using authenticated packs. I can choose to have the account be shared amongst all users of the doc, mm -hmm. or I can keep it private such that anybody who wants to build their own calendar invites from within here, uh, it's it's locked into their account yep. and they can't use mine to schedule something on mm -hmm. my calendar or on my behalf. Yeah. 
So that's a great option if you want people to be scheduling something for themselves instead of it being kind of from a source account that then gets pushed out to everybody else. Yep. And so what you'll see here, and I'm going to move out of the yep. way, out is if I put my finger up somewhere, um, you'll see that this actually adds a couple things for me. It gives mm -hmm. me a column format, which is super cool for other use cases we'll talk about in the future yep. where you can drop in a link to an event and get a bunch of details about mm -hmm. it. Or I can use buttons to add an event to my calendar yep. or update events that already exist if I have a link mm -hmm. to it. Um, so I'm going to use the button feature, and mm -hmm. I'm going to add that for each row of this travel deets table mm -hmm. like so that beep, beep, I can just hit all of them and I can add each of these items to my calendar individually. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for the sake of screen real estate, I'm going to add this column to the left of my Perfect. forecast. Insert column left, and I'm going to call this uh, create event. And this time I'm going to format this as a button column. Mm -hmm. And as we remember from the last time, uh, button columns or buttons in general in Coda have a bunch of configuration parameters. Yes. You can give them names. <laughs> you uh, should give. You them should names. give them names. <laughs> you should give everything in Coda a name. It's yes. really important. It needs an identity. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. everybody needs an identity. Yeah. Uh, like the share table or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and then we have the label itself, which you can actually make just text or you can make it dynamic mm -hmm. based on a formula. And yep. then you've got a bunch of things like which action you would take as a result of that button press. So you can see things within the doc like add, modify rows or delete rows, open hyperlinks, push other buttons even. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the ability to integrate with some of the packs that we have right. in here. So you see Google Calendar popped up. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I have things like a disabled state. So when should I I turn off this button. Add 12 of the done. same events. Exactly. <laughs> so if I've already created the events in my calendar, then why would I want to create it again? Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, a badge if I want to add some, or color or icon if I want right. to add a little bit of color to it. Yeah, so, make it really personalized. So I'm going to make this label say create event, uh, which is cool. I'm going to quickly add some color to it. I'm going to make it purple, and I'm going to do a little zap Ooh, yes. icon here. And then the action I'm going to take is Google Calendar create event. Mm -hmm. So now based on this, this specific uh, action that I'm taking, it will return back a bunch of parameters mm -hmm. that are specific to the calendar pack. So as an example, the first thing I need to do is select which account I'm creating this right. event on behalf of. So I'm going to use my private account, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, the summary is kind of the title of the event. Mm -hmm. So luckily I already have that in this yep. row for me, which is just equals what are we doing, which is that first column mm -hmm. you can see highlighted. And so. that'll always be for that specific row. So when you push the button in row number two, it will go to fly to Sun Valley. So you can have that personalized across. Totally. I'm going to hit start date. I already have that in this row. So I'm just mm -hmm. say start, which is that start date and time. And I'm do end equals end. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty good here. I have everything I need. If I want the description, I can put, for example, address. So I get the mm -hmm. address for folks who are, yeah. who are interested in that. And now the button's working. You can see I have the actual thing highlighted here, uh, which means it's ready to roll. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, let's let's start creating some events. Yep. And one thing I'll call out is you'll notice we're now on a flight to we Sundown. We are flying. I can, we I'm are currently getting my flying. beverage service, my little peanuts. That means you're in first class because yeah. that happens, you know. I know. I guess maybe I'm getting my elbow bumped by someone walking yeah. through. <laughs> <Wow. instead. laughs> Why are these seats so small? <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create stuff for Saturday since I have my calendar mm -hmm. pulled up for Saturday right now. So I'm going to put in all the ski itinerary for yeah, that date. So idea. I'm just going to click a couple of these buttons here. And you'll see at the bottom of the screen this is telling me one external action is performed. Mm -hmm. Um, so every time I hit like music at Whiskey Jacks, which is a, Sounds great. it's called Whiskey Jacks, not Whiskey Jacques, oh. which I oh. definitely misspelled this the first time I did it, mm -hmm. a bit confusing. So now I should have events showing up in my calendar automatically. If I switch over to this calendar, I, I swear this didn't <laughs> exist before. I'm going to go to Sunday and show you. So I'm going to hit Sunday. I've got nothing mm -hmm. on here. Looks like you need to add some events. Yeah, I need to add some stuff. So I'm going to go and hit some of these Sunday guys. Head mm -hmm. to Bald Mountain, ski, head home. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy day. Yep. Dinner at Pioneer Saloon and then brunch at Christina's the following day. And so if I go back to my calendar, these will start showing up. There we go. Here we go. So now I've got all of my uh, events. And if I click into this, this actually has in the description, as you can see here, the address mm -hmm. that I put in. Again, I like, I like no this time. a lot because for some people, like their calendar is the truth, right? Yeah. If it's not in the calendar, it's not going to happen. So it's a nice way for you to keep everybody connected and also honor their choices. Which yeah. It's kind of nice. Yeah, super awesome. You can meet people where they are. I feel mm -hmm. like that's kind of the premise of Coda is yeah. you can build anything with this product, but you can also extend it out to all the for different sure. places. For sure, that it can take work. on a lot of different forms. Yeah. 
So I think we have basically what we need from an itinerary mm -hmm. standpoint. So anybody who comes here can see the forecast, yeah. they can see where we're going, they can even create an event in their calendar. Yeah, so we've um, got, if I'm looking at the welcome section, we've now done who's going, where are they going, what are the dates, an itinerary. Boom. We've got that calendar invite daily alert. Yes. And we've got our forecast too. Perfect. Actually, the one thing I want to do after this is I just want to have the daily email go out. Oh, so, yeah. So we have the actual calendar events, but if I want to let everybody know at the beginning, the top of the day, mm -hmm. like what are the Here's things we're going to go do, do uh, we'll create this little daily email alert. Yeah. And that's actually just using a combination of our email, our Gmail pack and using automation. Mm -hmm. So our ability to kind of both send an email that is formatted however you want it to and then send it on a schedule. Yep. Because again, for some people, their email is the truth. If it's not in my email, I'm not going to see it. So it's a nice way to, again, like with the calendar pack, help connect people with the information. Yeah, so we're gonna start with your daily alert uh, for equals location. And I'm gonna add today's weather is, and mm, I'm gonna actually lovely. take just, I'm just gonna copy and paste what we have here for this formula. Um, and that will pull it back for me. Mm -hmm. So today's weather is cloudy. So this will show up at the top of that email. Yep. People know what they can prepare for. And then what I'm gonna do is create a view of my itinerary table. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna focus on the dates where right. today what is are we doing day. today? So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go hit table and I'm gonna go to my uh, travel deets table. You'll see this pulls in what looks like kind of a full view of this. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna hide some columns that are kind of unnecessary. Yeah, you won't need it in the text of the email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hide this. I think start and end is important address. So these all feel pretty important. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this title. So similar to what we did earlier, I can kind of limit some of the things that you see in, in this table structure if I don't need it. It's kind of redundant. I'm gonna add a filter to this table. So what I wanna show is only the rows that are relevant to today's date. And so what I can do is using the start date column, I can take that and I can move it. I have to add this to date mm -hmm. parameter to it because start is actually a date plus a time. Yep. And so I need to, you to just, just look pull the out date. the actual day. And then I'm going to say where it equals today. Mm -hmm. And so what that's going to give me, as you can see here, it filters down to seven out of 18 rows. Yep. So this will only give me the things that are relevant for today's date. And the cool part about this is everything in this section is actually going to show, it's going to change every day. So when I log into the section tomorrow, it's only going to show me mm -hmm. the itinerary for today. And so I guarantee that this automated email I'm going to send yeah. will only send me the things for today. Mm -hmm. And so I press this, you'll see now it shows me that I'm currently in flight to Sun Valley. Exactly. Yeah. I, I see seven events when I'm looking at it here. I should prepare for a cocktail party. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see also, I should always remind that if you look at mobile, you'll see that all this stuff is reflected mm -hmm. the same way here. Uh, I'm going to remove this little count and this is ready to get emailed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide the forecast uh, for right now. I'm just going to focus just on these four the columns image. just to make it a little bit cleaner. Yeah. And I'm going to go and I'm going to send this email. So to do that, I'm going to start by configuring the pack mm -hmm. as we typically do here. Yep. I'm going to add my Gmail pack. You see this. And it's worth noting that once you add a pack to a doc, after that first install as applicable, then it just it's just there. So you don't need to reinstall it every time. It's like you add it on and then it's just part of your doc and you can always work with it. Totally. So. And so now that I have that pack in the doc, uh, I can do things like with a button, send an email. Mm -hmm. I can also get threads and thread counts and messages and stuff like yep. that. If you want to have your feature. email just be in Coda, you can do that too. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going to move out of the way a little bit yep. and show what this automation looks like. So I'm going to open the automations pane. And for those who are unfamiliar, the uninitiated, <laughs> the uh, automations panel lets me define a set of rules. And each rule contains a when, it, contain an, it can contain an if, mm -hmm. and it can contain a then, which yep. is basically a way of saying, like, what's the trigger for this particular mm -hmm. thing? Is there some sort of filter that has to exist in the right. middle? So uh, maybe you don't want the automation to run under certain circumstances. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, then what happens? Mm -hmm. And then, then. And then, then, then. then? And then, um, so I'm going to label this rule because naming is important, as yes. we always say. Uh, this is the daily alert. And what I'm going to do then is choose my then. Mm -hmm. When, then, then, then. Uh, so now if I hit when, I have two options. I have when the row changes, mm -hmm. which is based on changes to the actual table, or I can do it time-based. So in this case, I'm definitely going to choose time-based, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it every day. Um, and so what this is going to do is... At a specific time of day, I can then trigger this to, to occur. Mm -hmm. And so it will happen under any circumstance at that specific time. So I'm going to say 9 
Maybe 8 a.m. because 8 we need to wake up early. Mm -hmm. We're going to be eating our eggs, yeah. maybe some French toast. It'll be your breakfast review. Exactly. And so I'm going to have all of this get sent out to me on an 8 a.m. basis. Mm -hmm. I don't need to add any filter to this, really. I just want to say when this happens, I'm going to send not just a specific row of information, but this this whole, whole section. section of information. Yeah. I'm going to send this entire thing, just package it up, throw mm -hmm. it to an email. So when I hit then, I'm going to choose, like I did with the button configuration earlier with Google Calendar, I can hit Gmail and I can say send email. Mm -hmm. And so this is, and I'm still in the screen a little bit, so I'm going to move it out of the way. Get all the way out. Uh, you can see here, then I get all the options to choose how to send this email. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose my account, which is my private Gmail account. Yep. The two, so if you remember earlier, I created that person table. People table. Um, and what I have is this table of people and I have all the email addresses. Mm -hmm. So I can just send it to all the people who yeah. are coming on this trip with me. So I'm gonna go back to this daily alert. I'm gonna say it's equals two, and I'm gonna say equals, and I just will remember the name of that table here. It's who's coming, so equals who's coming dot email. And you'll see that returns a list of the email addresses yeah, so for you can that Double table. check your work. Boom, who's coming dot email. The subject is gonna be your daily ski alert. And I, you know what, I'm just gonna put an emoji in here too. Ski, surprise, perfect. Surprise. I'm gonna just take that out of here and I'm gonna throw that in the top. You gotta make it fun, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then for content, uh, in some cases I can write some text in here and I can choose that or I can formulaically pull in a specific element right. from a table. In this case, the content I want is actually the daily alert section. We have this really cool thing called email section. Oh, so you can go and take the full section of information and you can email it to yourself. So. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say equals, and you'll see by default, this will show me all the sections in my document. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hit daily alert, and then press enter, and this, this automation is good to roll. Yeah. So all I have to do, if I wanna test this before I turn it on, is I can hit test rule, mm -hmm. and this is gonna go, and it's gonna run this test, and you see it says at the bottom, one external action performed. Mm -hmm. You can always check the activity yep. later, see how many times you've actually sent it. Yeah. And that one external action performed, it's just a fancy way of saying that the pack ran and did something somewhere else. So uh, when we added those Google Calendar events, you would see external action performed. Same thing here because it's happening outside of Coda. So that's just a good way of saying, hey, it worked. Yeah, and so I'm gonna pull this right up to the camera here. You'll see that I actually have my daily alert with a table formatted with all the information I wanted. Mm -hmm. That came nearly instantaneously. Yep. So now I have this test that actually pulled back everything I needed. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm ready to turn this thing on and have this fire. So I just hit that on button Perfect. and it's going to go every single day. I'm going to turn it off <laughs> because you don't we're not actually on this trip and that's just going to make me depressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we now have our little daily alert and automation. So that's, yeah. that's done. Sweet. Um, great. So we should talk money, money, dollar, dollar bills. So yeah, this is something that comes up with every single trip. It's like mm -hmm. some people are buying groceries, some people are going and bringing, you know, various things like bottles of wine yeah. that they want to like share with the group. Mm -hmm. Or people also... get different things at dinner. And, yeah, yeah, totally. So we wanted to make it easy for folks to, to manage the expense splitting process right. and do it in context of the actual trip planning so mm -hmm. that they have everything in one place versus trying to get another app right. to do it or something like that, or exactly. a spreadsheet, which a lot of people are mm -hmm. used to. Um, so I'm going to go and type the expenses section here. Uh, and I'm gonna choose a little, is it rent? Nah, let's do dollars. And we're gonna find ourselves a little money bags. A little money bag. Little money bags. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a uh, table of, or a view of the who's coming table. Right. Because this is the list of people who are on the trip. So these are the people who are gonna be mm -hmm. managing the expenses yeah. uh, for that we trip. We wanna link like with like. Yeah. Um, and. Actually, what I do here is I pull back this list of view of who's coming, and I can see, okay, here's all the people, and I can add in the, the actual expenses that they each contributed to. Mm -hmm. um, but I know I actually did this in a different document, and I can actually pull that information here. So oh. one of the cool things about Coda is that a lot of these little components you create are actually modular. You can go and take them, and you can apply them to different yeah. documents via copy-paste, and then you have this ability to, it, automatically mm -hmm. connects everything, it redistributes everything so that you don't have to do a bunch of legwork kind of reformatting yeah, you don't have to make, things like make that. it from scratch every single time. Um, so if you make a, a really cool little applet inside of a doc, you don't have to go back and do it all over again. You can just copy it and paste it right in and then you can start 
in that new that new world. Totally. So I have this little expense splitter. Me and my girlfriend use this. We bought airport cheese sandwiches and we split the expense on that. It's really cute. <laughs> what kind I know of cheese? I know it's adorable. I think it was Munster. Oh, very sexy. Is that a is that, that is real a cheese. cheese? Yeah, that's is it real. Pronounced like that? Mm -hmm. Is it German? Munster, I think it is. Yeah, yes. it sounds German. Mm -hmm. Now that you've said it German, mm -hmm. it sounds very German. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy paste everything that's here, which includes this add expense button. So these are this is two tables, just to go through how this is set up. Mm -hmm. uh, one table has the expense summary, which is the people. So it's this is the same as our people mm -hmm. table we had previously. And then we have this all expenses table where I can log each individual expense I have on the trip. And all I have to do is put in the description. The date will happen automatically, as I'll show you. Yep. Uh, who paid it and the cost. And then afterwards, we can see who shared those costs mm -hmm. and how we split that up right. later. Um, and so I'm going to copy all of this stuff in here and just control C. And I'm going to go and I'm just going to paste it right into my doc. And what you'll see is Coda took everything that I just had and magically reformatted it in the context mm -hmm. of this document. So if you look here, the conditional format that was on this, this conditional format is actually just showing if you if the user paid for it, so this is using the user formula, nice. who's logged in. Yep, in mine um, I don't see it highlighted. Right, it makes sense. so this is just showing me things I paid for. Um, I have this add expense button. Oh, there's, there's Maria's item. Uh, I have this add expense button, so when I hit this, it will then let me enter in extra cheesy sando. Mm. Uh, I'm going to say because it's extra cheese is $30. Uh, and I was going to say it shared. I'm just going to say I bought it myself for this uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hit that. And now you'll see that I've got who paid by in this. Uh, and you can see the shared between. And all this stuff is just pulled in automatically from, mm -hmm. from the other doc. Um, what you'll also see is, so Lucy's in here, but now you can see that this person list has Justin and Maria in here. So I'm gonna just gonna update this so that it says Justin and Maria. And you'll see that all these formulas that were in here before, so for example, this formula will aggregate the paid costs. Who, what are the different items that were paid yep. by this person? And this is just taking that expenses table and filtering it down to where paid by equals the person. Mm -hmm. uh, that automatically came over. All this calculation is coming through. It shows me which costs were paid, which ones were shared, and then I can hide these columns and see how much total was paid by that person and how much that person owes, mm -hmm. and then what they're due. Perfect. And this literally was was just a copy paste. So mm -hmm. never again do I have to recreate this expense splitting situation. Yep. I now have that at my fingertips every time I need it. Uh, you'll actually see that it, uh, inside of Coda we've templatized some of these situations inside of the doc here. You'll yeah. always see us adjusting and adding more to this. Um, but you can add things like your content calendar, expenses as well, yep. topic voting. Um, and so this just becomes a really useful way of building out your mm -hmm. docs as you, as, you, as you kind of move forward. Yeah. Um, and so I can do things here too where I can add in a column with buttons that like post a Slack message or uh -huh. post an email to someone saying like, Where's hey, my money? Yeah, at the end of the trip, <laughs> uh -huh. just asking for people to pay up. Um, and some other things in the horizon about how you can integrate, integrate this with mm -hmm. other tools. Um, so yeah, we now have our expense splitter. Cool. I'll I check think it we out. Can go welcome, Doc. I feel like we just need to set up a unicorn so that it just like <laughs> <laughs> pops out after we're done. Um, and so now we have our last little piece, which is our Slack out of office snazzy pack. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the things we can do here is we can just add it to the table, the itinerary table. Yeah, it's just the same sense. thing we can do here. Um, we're going to say a sassy pack, and actually I'm going to look up Slack, and I believe the logo is inside of this gallery. There it is. Boom. Slack sassy pack. That's the old logo, though. I know. Uh -huh. I know. we got to get that updated. <laughs> so what we're going to create is a view of the table that we have here, the travel deeds table. This is the itinerary. Um, I'm going to move all of this, these fields here because they're kind of unnecessary for working this. Right. Um, maybe I'll just add back the start time so people know. And then I can add a column for the Slack pack. So I just need to authenticate that pack like I did before. Mm -hmm. uh, Slack. Uh, now I sign in to install. It's the same piece. So it's actually using my Slack account in this case versus my Google account. Uh, I don't want anybody to use this but me. And I've completed my setup. Uh, so I'm good to go. I'm going to do what I did earlier, which is I'm going to add another button column here, which mm -hmm. is going to be using the Slack pack. Configure it. I'm going to say Slack out of office. 
And I am going to go ahead and I'm going to say this is going to use the Slack pack and it's going to post a message. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing as, as the other instead of creating an email or adding a calendar invite, I get to post a message. And you'll see that this is also very specific to the way Slack functions. So it right. doesn't have all the email to, from, etc. Mm -hmm. All it has is my account connection, which is my private account. The content is, I'm going to make this actually fun. I'm going to use the concatenate formula. Oh. <laughs> concatenate. This is a shout out to Product Hunt. Yeah. Meow. 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 Um, the concatenate formula is like a, a really cool way to just create custom formatted messages right. in Coda. Mm -hmm. um, it exists in other tools like like Google Sheets, but for us it becomes this really useful way of creating mm -hmm. dynamic messages depending on uh, depending on what's happening. Um, and I can either do it inside of this uh, inside of this uh, builder right here, but in this case I'm actually going to create a separate column for it first because I just want to see what it looks like yeah, before I commit it. It's nice to have a bit of a workspace or a scratch space. Forgive the cat pun. So. <laughs> scratch FIFA. <laughs> so I'm going to write equals concatenate in this field mm -hmm. and I'm going to say let's start with some quotes so I'm going to say Sawi I am out of office currently at and then I'm going to do a comma here which is going to let me add another set of text mm -hmm. in this case I'm going to put in the where what are we doing field mm -hmm. so now you can see this is actually populating the formula builder saw we am out of office currently at head to airport mm -hmm. that's a little silly but you could imagine putting in any content you want yep. in there um, and then I'm going to add one see you next week and then I can do like a ski emoji or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and so now I've got this little custom message. And if I press enter, you'll see this says a new message for every mm -hmm. row, which is specific to currently where I am. Yep. Um, and so what I can do is take this message, pass it into this button, and then I can have this button send at the moment yep. that it's important for somebody. So I'm going to go ahead and say the content instead of writing it in here. I'm just going to say it equals message, which is that column I just created. And then the channel I'm going to do is I'm just going to say at Maria because I'm just going to message oh, you. You're just going to give me the sass. I'm going to give you the sass. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this as red and the flame because I feel like that's <laughs> kind of that's an appropriate sass way, emoji. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the way I feel. And so what I should be able to do now is if I hit any of these buttons, if I hit this, it should send you a message. Oh, I just got one. Yeah, if you want to show on your phone or, or something oh, like see. that. Oh, let's see. Oh, my phone's over there. Oh, no. But Justin. Here. Do you have her phone? Here we go. <laughs> oh, oh, here she is. There's goes. no private. <laughs> Sorry, I am out of office. Sorry, <laughs> fly to Sun Valley. And so now we have this button column that can send these messages for me. And I can make it such that... Um, one of the things we showed previously, I can set an automation so it only sends uh, the specific row that I'm looking at. Um, I can also do something with the disabled state of this button. So as, a, as one of the formats uh, of, or one of the configurations available to me in a button column is the ability to take the stable state and disable all the other buttons given a certain criteria. Mm -hmm. And this is really helpful for things like if I've already completed the task, when I press the button and I sent a calendar invite, mm -hmm. I can disable it. Um, or I can do it as uh, a dynamic thing where it says only show the button if it's today's date. Yep. Um, so uh, as an example, I can go in and say uh, not and I'm going to do the same formula that I did for the conditional format here. So I'm going to take the formula that was already inside of this uh, conditional format. I'm going to go back to my itinerary section. I'm going to hit that format. And I'm going to copy and paste this right here. Mm -hmm. And so as you remember, this is highlighting only the row that's pertinent to right now. And I'm going to go back to the sassy pack. And I'm going to configure this disable state. And I'm going to use that same formula. Now, if I enter this formula the way it is now, it's only going to disable the one that is currently mm -hmm. on there, which is the opposite of what I wanted yes. to do. And so what I can do is actually put this into a not formula, uh, which will basically take the opposite of what I need. And so now I have just one button available to me, which mm -hmm. is the current button. So if I set up an automation on this later or something like that, I'm not going to push every single button right. that's in here. Um, and I can run this, for example, every hour. Mm -hmm. So if I go back to my automations pane, I can create a new one, which is my sassy out of office. I could say when, and this time I'm going to do time-based again. So I'm going to mm -hmm. say time-based, and I'll say maybe hour, and I'm going to repeat it every single hour mm -hmm. because I'm super annoying. Mm. 
I was I would just send this to my manager every day. Like, Hi. I'm sorry, I'm not here. We don't recommend that. Yeah, no, please. <laughs> Job security, do not take any of this advice as gold. Um, and so every hour this is gonna fire, and instead of saying uh, then and I'm gonna like custom build out this automation, I can actually use my push buttons. I love the push button. It's just push buttons. Mm -hmm. And literally what this will let me do is push a set of buttons inside of the dock. I can push one button, mm -hmm. many buttons, all the buttons. Yep. Uh, and what I'm going to select is actually, you'll see all the buttons show up here. I had that add expense button from mm -hmm. earlier, automatically add expenses, which I probably won't want to do. Yeah. Uh, I can do the create event one, which is you can use to create those calendar On events. The day, add them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, probably don't want to do that multiple times, just yeah. once. And then I have my travel deeds button, button column, which I just mm -hmm. configured here. And so what this will do is it will actually then on the hour press the buttons that are available to press in this column. And what's cool about the push buttons piece of this is it will respect the disabled state of yes. that column. So if I hit push buttons, if none of these were disabled, it would push every single button in that which column, would which would be bad because my manager would get a lot, a lot of Slack messages <laughs> and be very angry with me. Uh, in this case, it's only gonna push the one that I have available. So mm -hmm. if I hit test rule, and this is again, we're just gonna have to trust that it you, just uh, came you through. got yep. that message. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna send one message and it's the specific yep. one that we're currently on. Sawi, I am out of office, currently at Fly to Sun Valley, airplane emoji, see you next week. Exactly. So yeah, now we have our sassy, ooh, uh, out of office. I was like, are you okay? <laughs> The coffee ran out, yep, so I'm gonna actually true. I'm gonna end you this. Gotta with, adjust. I'm gonna go back to my coffee meter and say I probably need some more at mm -hmm. the end of this. Um, so just as kind of a recap of all the things we chatted about, you know, we started off with that bulleted list of what we want this applet to do for us. Started to build out from there, adding sections as we have new purposes to work with, and then all of the things that we set up as far as rules, buttons, automations, all of those work then in our mobile device too. So if I am working with my friends and I only have my phone, I'm able to actually explore and experience this in the same way as I could if I was on my desktop. Yeah, you have all this awesome, so mm -hmm. if I just yeah. focus on the phone for a second here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just gonna show us all the stuff we created, rendered mm -hmm. perfectly for the mobile experience. I have ability to kind of navigate the itinerary. You'll see that as I swipe, um, as we showed before, button columns become these swipe actions. So yep. now I can actually create that calendar event right yeah. from the swipe here on the phone. Uh, my daily alert, this is, if I get the email, I can always come back to this mm -hmm. section of the dock. And if I click into more here, I can see all the other pieces like my expense adder. Yep. I've got my add expense button. I yeah. can just type it in here on the fly. So if we're at the restaurant and I've just paid the bill, I can just go boop, be -lee 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 -lee. Yep. No photo of receipts required. Your no photos of receipt requires. <laughs> that would be terrible. Um, be you didn't bad. upload the receipt, but if you do want to upload your receipts, <laughs> You could add an image column, and actually, people can upload their receipt images. Oh yeah, they to could take column. a picture of yeah. their receipt. Yeah, that would be super interesting. So, if you want to be a, a full-on accountant <laughs> with your friends, you can certainly do that. Actually, um, yeah, I can I can throw that in here. Yeah, really it's quick pretty too. cool. Let's take a look. All right, so if I just go in here, and I want to have for each expense, I'm going to add a column, and I'm going to say this is an images column. Mm -hmm. This is a new thing we added recently, so yeah. I can add images from my desktop. Mm -hmm. But if I go to mobile, uh, this will let me do a totally different experience where I can go and add images from my phone. Mm -hmm. um, so if I type in fly to Sun Valley, actually I'm going to add an expense. And uh, I'm in the wrong section. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not showing. Uh, and I can go here and click this. And then if I show some hidden columns, I get my little images column and I hit that plus button. And it's going to pull up from my desktop here, but on my phone it's going to go from my actual image. So I can. Yeah. So you just take a picture and then be on For work trips. For work trips. Hopefully you're not doing it for your personal Or if you're trips. just really hardcore <laughs> and want to make sure that all of your accountants, uh, accounts and taxes are all very clear. Yeah. You know. Some people some people have No that. hate. No, no hate. hate. No hate at all. <laughs> Cool. Well, I think we're just about out of time. Yeah, we're just about out of time. But um, have fun building out your docs. It's been really great for us to see all of the Maker Festival um, submissions. They've been really inspiring, really awesome. So hopefully this is a little bit fun. Uh, use it on your next trip. We also have in our template gallery tons of other trip planning templates that you can go ahead and steal from and adjust. So please uh, have fun with that. And thanks for joining us today. It's yeah, thanks so much. All right. We're see you, everybody. Gonna...